might just mention that uh, Linda's information, uh, if you'd like to go through it more, or even summaries of Charlie's information are both presented on the Swell Nexus website, uh, as part of the MASH blog on that site. Linda, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Um, so I am, as Rick said, an extension graduate research assistant at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. I'm a PhD candidate, and um, this was part of my dissertation work. So I'm just gonna summarize um, the literature review that I did on the effects of manure and biosolids on soil quality. Hmm. Okay, so um, first I just wanted to give a little bit of background information about why soil quality or soil health is important. So the FAO defines soil health as the capacity of the soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that sustains plants animals and humans. And it's really the intersection and consideration of soil physical, chemical, and biological properties. It's the biological properties that um, make soil a living system in addition to, to the plants that live there. And soil really needs, it has to have good quality in order to provide nutrient cycling, um, proper water, and physical support and habitat for biodiversity. Um, to really support um, plants, animals, and humans. And there's been a lot of focus on how practices like cover cropping and crop rotations affect soil quality, but not much um, has really focused on the effect of manure on soil health properties. And in general, practices that increase soil organic matter increase soil quality. And um, as a small soil alert, manure increases um, soil organic carbon, and so it is uh, in soil organic matter, and so it is a practice that has the potential and does increase, improve soil quality. So the objectives of this, um, of this literature review were to summarize um, the results of short and long-term studies reporting the effects of livestock manure and municipal biosolids on chemical, physical, and biological properties of the soil, and to also look at other indicators of soil quality, like um, climate resistance, the resistance to drought and uh, heavy rainfall events, crop yield and quality, and things like that, that are also indicators of good soil quality. And I also wanted to, um, so that the first objective is really to assess the current state of the science, and the second objective is to really where does the science need to go now um, to move forward? So the second objective was to describe future research needs related to manure and soil quality. Um, so just very briefly, um, we looked at a lot of different soil physical, chemical, and biological properties, and they're all listed here. Um, and basically any manure study that looked at one or more of the, the effect of manure on one or more of these properties was included in, um, in this paper. And I have listed 219, but it's, I've, I'm working on um, improving this literature review more. And so it's a little bit more than that. Um, and there's also more, there's 175 that are relevant, um, where only, the only thing that was compared changed between um, between treatments was manure application, um, and then there were 15 review articles that were also included. But those review articles didn't really investigate the effects of manure on uh, biological properties, and a lot of those review articles are several decades old. Um, so just kind of focus more on biological properties, and also what is the, the newest research out there. So here's just a table of the number of studies for all of these properties. And so most of the uh, previous research has really focused on the effect of manure on chemical and physical properties, like soil carbon and organic matter, bulk density, um, aggregation, um, water holding capacity, and then NPK are also um, had quite a few studies as well. And there were 66 that looked at biological properties, but within those 66, 
there were uh, a number of metrics and some of them might have only had one. So the majority of those biological studies only looked at microbial biomass carbon and not that many others. Um, and so the other um, indicators that we looked at were microbial biomass nitrogen, respiration, nitrogen mineralization, um, PLFA, which is a, a for diversity, and microarthropods, nematodes, and earthworms. And these studies were worldwide and used a lot of different manure source sources and on many soil types and had a lot of different climates. And so, to, to summarize, in general, manure increases soil organic carbon. Um, it increases nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and also contains a lot of soil micronutrients. Um, the effect of CEC and pH varied because the effect of the manure and biosolids is highly influenced by the chemical properties of the amendment and the initial chemical properties of the soil. Um, and so for CEC and pH, it just, it really depended on what the soil type was and what kind of climate it was. And then also a little bit of what type of amendment was being used um, and the amount of amendment that was applied. But I did wanna talk a little bit more about soil organic matter because that's really, um, that's really what drives one of the main factors of improving soil quality. Um, and this is just a table or a diagram that I pulled from one of the articles. And it just shows that when you increase soil organic carbon through organic amendments like manure, there's a lot of really neat things that happen. Um, you enhance the water holding capacity of the soil, increase nutrient retention, and improve the structure and biological quality. And all of those will all eventually lead to an increase of soil organic matter because um, as biology breaks down and consumes that carbon, it stabilizes and will be eventually become organic matter. And manure increases soil organic carbon 10 to 100 plus percent. It's really variable because it depends on a lot of factors like climate and soil type, um, but it does manure does increase organic carbon because there's a lot of carbon in manure. And this is compared to inorganic fertilizer. And another interesting thing that I, um, that I uncovered is that about 20% of the carbon that you apply with manure will persist um, after the first year. And so it, not all of the carbon will remain in the soil system. It's consumed, it's lost, it's respired, um, but 20% will remain. Um, and that's eventually what builds up and creates, allows soil organic matter to be created. Um, so for soil physical properties, aggregate stability and infiltration increase and bulk density decreases. And again, water holding capacity was kind of a, uh, in some cases it increased, in some cases it didn't, and it was very split and it, it was very dependent on the soil type. Um, likely going back to what Charlie said, Charles said about the, um, ab about having more effect on the clays and the heavy sands. Um, for biological properties, there's really three ways to assess biology in the soil. There's abundance, so how, what, um, how many bacteria or microbes are there? Um, and included in abundance was bacteria and fungi, earthworms, and nematodes and microarthropods. You can also assess it with diversity, which was done through PLFA in many of these studies, um, or activity, which was done with respiration. So how many are there? Um, who's all there, the types of community, and then also what are they doing? And in general, manure significantly increased bacteria and fungi abundance in soil compared to inorganic fertilizer. It increased respiration, it increased earthworm and nematode populations, but didn't seem to have an effect on uh, microbial diversity or upper order 
um, microarthropods, but there weren't that many studies that looked at those. And so, um, so why is all of this important? Um, as Charles said, the soil is 99, 95 to 99% mineral particles, and depending on where you live, one to 6% is soil organic matter. And in that soil organic matter, there's stable humus, um, ready and decomposable uh, plant matter and things to break down. But there's also three to 9% is bacteria, fungi, fauna, and other soil biology. And so it, it's a part of the soil organic matter. And they're really important for um, nutrient cycling and um, just in plant health and growth. And so just to go a little, I, I really like this diagram of the soil food web and how um, it all impacts each other. And I think this is a, a great way to show these biology results. Um, so manure in significantly increases soil organic matter, which then allows that um, bacterial and fungal populations to increase. And these were measured with soil or microbial biomass carbon and nitrogen. And in comparison to inorganic fertilizers, manure increases these, this population 10 to over 100%, just like the organic matter increases. Um, and then because those populations are increased, does not necessarily mean that the arthropod populations are increased up here, just a little bit out of order, but um, the nematodes that feed on fungal and bacteria are increased and the root feeder nematodes were mixed. There was only a couple of studies and they were pretty, um, uh, one showed an increase of those types of nematodes and others showed decreases. And then earthworm populations also significantly increase. And this is for long-term and short-term results across many soil types and manure source, sources. Um, the fungal and bacterial populations increased within a year of manure application. And so just some future recommendations for um, this type of research is that um, the quantification of biological metrics should be included because the biology is really important in nutrient cycling and not that many studies looked at that. And I also think um, a lot of the, the studies that I looked at applied pretty high rates of manure on an annual basis where um, in many cases phosphorus, um, there's a lot of excess phosphorus and likely a producer would not um, apply that much manure that often. And so I think we need to look at what are the effects of a single application of manure or is there an optimum frequency for application to improve certain soil properties? Can we leverage manure to improve, um, improve certain properties to address issues in a field? And then also to provide discussion that really relates um, this research to management decisions that are relevant to crop producers to really increase the utilization of this um, uh, of this value product. So I just wanted to quickly thank um, the funding sources for this project, the Soil Health Institute and the North Central Region Water Network, and also the two undergrads that really helped organize and identify these articles. Thank you.